Here's a picture of a refrigerator, and here are two petri dishes with chemical reactions happening in them. Our question is, what does one have to do with the other? The chemicals we're going to start off with are sodium iodate, citric acid, sodium sulfite, and starch. And you can see the products on the right. Now, they're not going to just all react at once. Reaction 1 is going to happen, at least reaction 2, that leads to reaction 3, and leads to reaction 4. In the last reaction, iodine is going to react with starch to form an iodine-starch complex. Here's where the reactions are going to take place. The first three reactants are going to go in first, then followed by the starch solution. The four reactions aren't going to take place at the same time. They're going to go in a series. So reaction one, then reaction two, then reaction three, then reaction four. So it's going to take some time. So for those four series of reactions to happen, it took a time of 17.3 seconds. Now let's do this series of reactions again. This time we're going to place them in well 4 and let's see how long it takes for it to happen. So this time it was much faster. It only took a time of 7.4 seconds. So this leads to a new question. Why was one reaction faster than the other? We're going to see the reactions again, this time in a bigger scale. We're going to use petri dishes. In the left petri dish, we're going to put the reactants in and mix them together. And this time, the temperature is going to be a lower temperature. And on the right, the same reactants. And this time, it's going to be at a higher temperature. So let's see what happens. So even though the reactants were put in the petri dish on the left first, it took a longer time for those reactants to do their reactions than the petri dish on the right which was at a higher temperature. So this demonstration shows that temperature does affect the speed of a chemical reaction. The higher the temperature, the faster the reaction goes. So this leads to another question. Why does temperature affect how fast a reaction happens? Well, let's take a look. For a reaction to happen, the molecules have to bump into each other, and heat energy makes the molecules move. So the more heat energy, the higher the temperature, the faster they go. Whereas you lower the temperature, that means you take away heat energy, the molecules move slower, and they're not able to react as fast. All right, back to our original question. Remember, what do chemical reactions have to do with a refrigerator? You know, what's the purpose of a refrigerator? Most people would say, hey, it prevents food from spoiling by making it cold. Well, why? Here we have some food, let's say it's potato salad, and bacteria could be already in it, or it could have landed from the air, and there can also be some fungi in there as well. Well, the potato salad is food for the bacteria and fungi. They're going to use the food to convert it to energy so that they can use it for cellular needs. Just like in humans, the digestion and the release of energy in that food is a series of complex chemical reactions way more complex than the series of reactions in the petri dishes. From that released energy, the bacteria and fungi can grow and reproduce, further taking over that food. In the process of doing that, the flavor of the food has changed. You don't have those same chemicals anymore. And in fact, with some bacteria and fungi, they can produce toxins, which can be very dangerous and make you sick when you eat spoiled food. So it's very important to take that food that's sitting on a countertop at room temperature, put it in the refrigerator so that the refrigerator takes away heat energy and slows these complex series of chemical reactions down to slow down that spoiling of the food. You can even slow it down even further by putting it in the freezer because it reduces the temperature down even further.